So today here at Ping in Napa Valley, we harvested some Malbec. We're going to be processing this fruit. We're actually known and we predominantly make Cabernet Sauvignon, but this is one of the other five Bordeaux varietals. It's a great blending tool. And this is our sorting table here. We pick into these half ton bins and then we dump onto the sorting table and then we pick out any clusters that have too much shrivel, shriveling, raisining. We'll dump all of those. We don't want those in our wine. We'll also pick out any leaves, stems. So we're just cleaning it up. It's gonna go through this machine here where it's gonna de-stem uh, the grapes and all the stems are gonna be shot out on this end. So we're separating these stems out. And then all of the must, as we call it, as soon as it's de-stemmed and uh, it's gonna go down into this sump, which basically is just going to help pump it up into the tank. So we will either go into a tank or sometimes we go into a tea bin, depending on the lot size. If we're doing only about a ton of fruit, we'll go into a small tea bin. Um, if we're doing a larger size, we'll go into a tank and we'll um, try to go into whatever tank fits best for that block. Here we're going into a tank because we have about two tons of fruit and here's a tea bin which holds about one and a quarter tons of fruit. So once the fruit goes into the tank, what we'll do is we'll turn the jacket on and we'll do a cold soak and what that's doing is we're taking the temperature down to about 50 degrees, we hope 55. <laughs> and uh, we're trying to just really stabilize the color, extract more color, um, and really extract some really nice flavor components. So it's kind of an aqueous extraction, whereas um, when you're doing the, fer when the fermentation is going, you're gonna be doing an alcoholic extraction. You have a lot of alcohol and heat during the fermentation, so you're gonna get a lot more extraction, but a little bit different um, in, in its type. And then what we'll do is we'll either inoculate or we'll do a natural fermentation and we'll let it go naturally um, using the yeast that come in from the vineyards or the microflora in the winery. And once the fermentation starts, then we start pumping over. We'll pump over initially uh, once a day just to homogenize everything and make sure that it's just everything's getting the juice and the, the skins are staying in contact. And then as the fermentation process starts, we'll, we'll increase that to two times a day. We'll do one in the morning and one in the afternoon. And the length of them will really be determined on how the volume of, of the tank and, and the grapes that are inside of it. And uh, we're essentially in, in, introducing oxygen to the wine, allowing the yeast to sort of continue to build and continue to ferment. Uh, and then that's usually, as it starts to tail off, we'll go back to one time a day. Uh, when they're done in the tea bins, rather than doing pump overs, what we'll do is a, a punch down, where essentially we're taking the grapes and punching them down. Again, keeping the, the, the skins and the juice in constant contact, because really the, the, the flavors and the color and all of that come from the skins of, of the wine. When you actually pick grapes off the vine and when you bring them in, the juice is very barely pink. Um, all of those flavors and um, colors are coming from the skin, so we really need to extract all of those. But we want to do it as gently as possible and fine tune it for the grape varietal. Sometimes we'll do an extended maceration, which means we're really not pumping over much anymore, but we're letting the wine remain in contact with these skins and we let it stay at a nice warm temperature and continue to extract. Um, really soften its tannins and after that is finished when we're ready to press off we just taste every day and we just wait until the wine's just tasting exactly right. So we drain all of that wine and it's called free run because it just freely runs off and then all of those skins that are left behind are saturated with wine so we will shovel all of those out of a tank and put them in our press. This is our press here uh, so as Anna mentioned we'll, we'll take all those skins and, and seeds after uh, the free run juice has been separated. We'll dump them on top of the hopper into the press. We run a really gentle press cycle. We don't want to extract out a lot of the harsh tannins and greenness that come from the skins and the seeds. Uh, that juice will collect in the uh, juice pan. We will then take that and pump that into a separate tank and we'll keep our press and our free run separate. After they settle about a day, we'll pump them into the barrels and then we'll uh, let them continue to age. And that's when the wine goes in a barrel and it goes into the cellar for approximately a year and a half. We use 100% French oak, all different coopers, and we use anywhere between 50 to 70% new 
we don't have a set determined uh, percentage of new oak that we use each year on the vineyards. We really let the vineyards dictate and tell us, you know, if you're lacking a certain aspect within the growing season after it's sort of fully fermented, we'll adjust the, the oak regimen based on, on those vineyards. And we use a mix of, of medium plus and heavy toast. They'll each extract out different flavor profiles that we're really trying to achieve. It's anywhere between 18 to 21 months that we'll age the wine. Um, we'll go through and we'll taste all the different vineyard blocks. So when those are aging, we'll start tasting through them and we'll taste through the free run, we'll taste through the press lots, and we will um, determine the main blend. So we start off uh, making a main blend and then we'll continue tasting all the other lots and blend in. Um, Whichever lots we feel feel put together the, the, best, the best blend. Uh, I think a lot of people come to Napa and they kind of feel that uh, every vineyard is this one homogenous uh, growing area and for us our vineyards are not like that. They're set up in different little areas and it's a really a tool to Farana and I to, 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 to utilize because we have the ability to in certain years if one little block within the firehouse vineyard is underperforming or is perform outperforming we can kind of keep them and make that our base and then slowly add in the different lots and I think that's one thing that really sets our, us apart here. Sometimes we even pick a block separate, you know, we'll pick half of a block or maybe the sunny side versus the shady side or um, just based on um, the ripeness of the grapes because we want everything to be as homogenous as possible. And after 18 to 21 months we will bottle the wine, we bring in a mobile bottling line and we'll wrap it up, put it in bottle and let it age in bottle for a little while before we release it.